Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal Leandra here with Ghost Girl Diaries, and it is a paranormal podcast brave enough for those of you that are ready to join our summoning circle with HP Lovecraft today. Um, today I have Elfie with me as my guest co-host, and we have some really cool chats that we're going to do about um, HP Lovecraft and his famous Necronomicon, so I'm kind of excited to get into that he had a very interesting life, to say the least. He also had a really huge, um, you know, influence in pop culture, even modern times. But when it comes down to paranormal, he's kind of like one of the godfathers of creating, you know, paranormal lore. So I, I can't wait to get to that. I know a few of you have been messaging me on social media saying, like, Crystal, when are you coming back to YouTube? When, where are your uploads? Why aren't you on Instagram? did you die are you a ghost <laughs> what happened like what's going on the answer is partially yes i have died uh, a, a part of my soul is gone and it's not coming back um i've been in the process of editing my book as you guys know and uh it's been i didn't realize how much work it was going to be to be honest with you so this particular book i have several books that are pretty much completed um this was my first choice to release as i've said before and it is, uh, it will be called the Ghost Girl Diaries, the Love Diaries. So it's, it, it does have some paranormal in it. Some of you have been asking me, um, you know, is it a paranormal story? It's a real life memoir based on my relationships. And some of my relationships have had um, some interesting things connected to paranormal. So yes, I will be talking about paranormal in that book. Um, I think that once it's released, Kat and I have talked about sitting down and sort of creating uh, some Q&As for her to like interview me during a live stream about my book 
once it's released. So we are planning on doing that. Where is the book? Uh, I wish I could tell you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I it, the editing process for for a book is ungodly. Okay, like that's really all I can say is um, I really didn't have a clue how much work went into getting it edited, and then you have to get it into like. Um, there's different formats. I first had it in a PDF format and then you have to add the barcode thing on the back of the book and then you have to add the IP um, or what is it? What is the little like address that it comes? I whatever. Anyway, it's a lot. That's all I'm saying. So I literally and I'm only one person. So I haven't been on YouTube or doing any Instagram content because my main priority has been getting this book out. A lot of you have been saying, like, why now? Why all of a sudden? I don't know. I can only tell you that in December, like, I'd say the first week of December, I had a dream from my, like, spirit guides and my spirit team, and they basically were, like, pushing me to do this. They were like, it is time to release one of these books. You've got to get it done. And that sort of was my push for why I'm doing it. So it's an awesome book. I hope that you guys love it. I am really, I just told Elfie, because <laughs> I've been editing my book, that I really am sick of my book at this point. <laughs> like, I feel like I could recite the damn book from front to back. Like, I feel like I have it memorized. Um, and, you know, it is. It's really good. So uh, I can't wait to share it. It's going to be interesting because it's a lot of my private moments. I, fingers crossed, the book should be available for purchase sometime this weekend or the latest by Monday, February 1st of 2021. So, like, we're really close to getting this finished. Um, it will be on print demand on Amazon or on PDF. So it'll be up to you on which one you want to purchase. How much will it be? I think I'm going to stick with numerology because that's just who I am. And so my favorite number is 14. So I think the printable one will be like $14.44 because that's my lucky favorite number. And the PDF will probably be like $9.99 to stay with my numerology stuff. So just to keep you guys informed, I will always discuss what's going on on social media so make sure you're following me especially on twitter that's where i do all my announcements is on my twitter but i'm gonna bring in my co-host elfie today how are you miss elfie oh wow how are you doing good i'm Better really some good of it. <laughs> how is uh how's the east coast going is or have you gotten much snow on that side of, i mean cat did a little bit Yes, we started getting some snow today and everything, and it's just been, yesterday it was like, I, I love when my phone's like, it's 21 degrees, but it feels like 9 degrees. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Right. <laughs> yeah, Kat sent me a picture that it felt like negative 5 in New Hampshire, and I was like, mmm. I could believe it. And I'm sitting here <laughs> complaining and laughing because Vegas, it snowed in Vegas, um, I know people think you can't get snow in Vegas. It happens, actually. It happens a lot. It doesn't stick by any means. But, you know, it'll snow in Vegas. So the last two days it did snow in Vegas. And if you sit in the middle of Vegas and look at all the mountains around us, usually the west side of Vegas, because that's like the Cali side, it will, the snow will stick over there. But the Arizona side, it's pretty rare when that happens. That's where, like, the Hoover Dam is. It's just warmer because it's Arizona. And there's snow on the mountains by Arizona. And I was just, like, blown away because that was so... I mean, it looked beautiful. It was gorgeous. It was... You know what? I thought yeah, to myself, I should have drove to the <laughs> Hoover Dam to see what it looked like with the snow. I should have done that. I was like, God, it was... Of course, that walk. Have you ever been to the Hoover Dam? I've not been to the walk to get up that thing is like, <laughs> oh, it's not fun. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Kat's done it with me before, and she was like, wow, this is quite a walk. <laughs> it is. It literally is. So anyway, um, HP Lovecraft and uh, Necronomicon, which I am freaking obsessed with. I have the Necronomicon literally sitting right here. Let me see if I can get it. Um there's so many people who are like let's just start with that because i feel like that's a really good okay. start topic people mm -hmm. are like deathly afraid of the necronomicon like there's some people out there that are like oh my god that's like ancient text these pictures i'm showing you guys right now 
and like you know it's satan's work this is all satan's work right here you know what i'm saying and it's you're going to summon the devil using that book or reading it you shouldn't even have this in your house you should burn it and i remember when i ordered this book i had to i ordered it um this was years ago i had ordered it on like barnesandnoble.com and i went and picked it up and because it was before like amazon was big and I remember when I picked it up from Barnes and Noble, <laughs> the woman that gave me my order was like, we don't keep books like that on the shelves in our store. And I was like, why? <laughs> she was like, because that's for the devil. That's for the devil. And oh, my God, <laughs> Alfie and I both have it. It's so bad. So, I mean, you know, the question is, do you think it's the devil's work? Okay. <laughs> Elvie's like, I can't keep a straight face, like literally. Um, no. Well, I mean, we, we are also a little strange, Elfie. You have to admit, we're both a little strange. So, I mean, we're not. <laughs> I mean, what's normal, though? I mean, but yeah, I've had, I mean, I'm same. I've had this forever, you know, like, and. Uh, I, I'm going to be real. I don't... When you hold the Necronomicon, do you get bad vibes from it? No. It, it, it was... Well, it also was one of the things like I said. I had had this proper... And honestly, it was just like the long time before I actually ever picked it up and read it. I was more like, Necronomicon, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I finally like, no, let's, let's actually read the book. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, and I think what scares people, because I'm just flipping through it like lightly, just to like look through it. Like, there's stuff that say that there's, like, Arabic writing in here, and then there's other things that say um, the uh, incantations, you know? Like, so if you think of words like that, I feel like that's automatically going to scare people off. Um, the only thing I am going to... Well, ex yeah, no, exactly. I mean, <laughs> it, same. <clears throat> Don't come to my house and look at my, my bookshelf that's right over here, because there's a lot of stuff over there, you know what I'm saying? But, um... Yeah, <laughs> she takes a sip of her tea and that freaks you out. Hmm, okay. I, um, I, this is a random thing I wanted, and I haven't even told you this because I just thought it'd be fun to tell you live to get your reaction. Okay. There was, um, a time I went to Zach's museum, and I think, I don't think Kat was in town for this. And I woke up, the, and I always get followed home from him, you know, from his place, and... I woke up the next day and <laughs> I had what looked like been branded, you know, like a cow brand. Like I looked like I had been branded on my ass cheek. <laughs> okay. I'm not, ki I'm not kidding you. And okay. it looked like this number and I looked up the number cause I was like, it looked like a photo had been branded on my, my ass cheek. And it was a photograph from the Necronomicon, and it was this this four here. So I just didn't know, you know, what do you think of that? I mean, let's now I'm going to scare people even more because of the shock value, you know. <laughs> it was. It's all over the Necronomicon. This sort of four-looking thing was branded on me. And I have pictures of it. Kat's actually seen it. Um, and Kat was freaked out by it, of course. And, of course, the fact that I, I was able to um, locate the image and connect it to this is interesting. What does that mean? S Satan's work. Come on. Get out of here. Like, I'm sorry. In my opinion, people give Satan way too much credit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, seriously. I think demons and Satan get way too much credit. What do I think it was? I don't know. He's got so many things in that well, place. I wanna, how long did that mark last on the bus? It was a minute. It was a minute. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it, like, it didn't go away, like, the next day. It wasn't really, it wasn't like a cut. Like, it wasn't, like, cut there. It looked like it had been actually, like, branded in my butt. And okay. it was the strangest thing. <laughs> I don't, and I don't think Zach has anything... HP Lovecraftian, you know, there. I know that he, I don't, yeah, he likes Lovecraft. I know that, but I don't think he, I'm trying to think. 
I mean, he in his oddities room, he could have something strange, but I don't think he has anything like pre-owned by Lovecraft or anything like that. But he, he saves that for his private collection. <laughs> he he has some strange stuff. That's all I'm gonna say. I I wouldn't be surprised if he did have some sold like some sold him a a possible human leather bound Necronomicon. Like just like here we go. <laughs> he does have um a leather bound um sort of notebook thing in um the prison room. I can't remember whose it was. The The problem is with the museum, which I would love for you to, I know coronavirus, we don't want to, you know, we have to wait till that's over. But once that's over and you come out here, I'd love to go with you. But really, there's so much to see there. That's why you have to go back multiple times. Like you're oh, not, oh yeah. I mean, there's so many things like you just can't even pay attention to, to what's there. I, I wish it was a real museum where they let you, like, walk around and wander. But I understand why he doesn't do that. I think he's also concerned people will, like, touch things, you know. But there's so many things in there. Um, anyway, back, I'm sorry, back to Lovecraft. Anyway, about my branded ass. <laughs> Jeez. I told you, the conversations can just lead anywhere. Anyway, what was that related to? I mean, I honestly think sometimes energies, like, you know, even if it's a human energy or whatever, it just wants to pretend like it's dark or demonic to scare you. And, and who knows, this book has literally been around for, like, ever. So now the, the actual story behind the Necronomicon, too, was it basically disappeared. Like, the original copy, like, supposedly disappeared and no one knew what happened to it. And then years later, it just sort of appeared again, but it was like disintegrating because it was in such bad shape. And then some guy like took the disintegrating book and then tried to like, you know, reassemble it in like a, a format that wasn't rotting and decaying. And then that's when they took it and started publishing it, which is what, you know, Elfie and I have in our hands. So a lot of people thought Lovecraft basically was one foot in the you know mortal realm and one foot in the spirit realm i mean what do you think about that i find very interesting because like when you start to read about him and everything you see how much he was very much against that stuff too i mean he wrote about the weird stuff but like it his views seem to be like people to actually believe it was real to him he thought was just ridiculous and everything. Like to him, he just thought he was right and put the tails and it was like, you have in contact with the spiritual world and he's like, I'm just writing weird stories. Right. Well, he denied it, yet he would have roommates and people that knew him that said they would see him writing sometimes, late at night in particular. So once again, I find that interesting that he would write late at night. Apparently, he said he got his best information of, like, strike of genius or creativity, however you want to word it, between, like, 1 to 3 a.m. Once again, we're talking about the witching hour. So, like, the irony... Yeah, I mean, the irony that he's writing these incredible paranormal stories during a time where like portals are open it does make you wonder but you're right he'd, he'd interview people and he'd be like i was just writing i was just creative writing stories and you're looking at him like hmm i feel like that's what i think is interesting because that could be looked at too it's like he he just wrote it he just wrote it as it came to him he didn't try to filter it he didn't try to interpret it he just like Here's the story, and that could be seen too. I could see where there could be a connection to the subconscious or the other realm, and him not seeing it that way. He was just like, "This is a story that's coming out of my imagination." Mm -hmm. He, I was, I'm, I wish I could have met him. Do you think he was a like before his time? Writer wise, yeah. I absolutely. Like he, he, he was very much, and that's the thing I've been quite interested in looking into him is that. When you hear about him, there's definitely the, the other stuff, but then also people who are actually new him. Because he sounds like when you first meet him, he probably is the kind of standoffish, but when you get to know him, he actually is 
someone to hang out with because a lot of these people who actually knew him, they're like, yeah, he was a good guy. He was, he was polite and everything. Even though everyone's like, he was also super awkward. Right. And had but <laughs> okay, wait. Like, okay, I read that too over and over again, which I laugh because like, Okay, I am extroverted. I will say that I am extroverted. And I know that is rare and paranormal. A lot of people are very, like, introverted. Like, I've even talked about Zach is very, like, uh, you know, I've had friends and people in my personal life. My mom has met Zach, you know, like, and people are, like, they get frustrated. because like, He's not the person you see on TV. And I'm, like, that's because, like, that's, he, he's, when he's filming, he's by himself. He's with his best friends and they're filming and there's no audience and there's no strangers oh. there, you know? And that with... That is probably also partially a character, too. It, it is. A, a character of himself, because probably, as you say, if you saw the real him, you'd be like, what's this? He is. In person, he's real withdrawn and quiet. And, like, now, when I'm around people, even when I'm meet, doing meet and greets, I'm still, I'm still the same. I'm still the big personality you guys see in person. But... When it comes down to it, reading about Lovecraft and saying he was weird and withdrawn, I am like that in my own moments as well. And, and I'm, I know Elfie is like, and I know Kat is. And once again, I do feel like all of us that are related in paranormal or have the love of the occult on the other side, we all have that weird, creepy side where we're introverts and we're weird because that's what we, we yeah. literally are so interested in the other side and death. Of course we're going to be weird and strange. And, and especially you're looking at H.P. Lovecraft, someone who's, like, literally creating worlds that we're seeing, like, actual worlds that have now made such influence on pop culture. And I just love that we have that in common with H.P. Lovecraft. You know what I'm getting at? Like, it's... It, it makes you not feel as alone, like, as a paranormal investigator or if you have the witchy side and you do spells and spell crafts, like, because, I mean, a lot, there's some spell work in here, too, in the Necronomicon. And once again, he claims the Necronomicon was a creative piece. I don't think it was. Do you, Elfie? Do you think this is just a short story book? Well, okay, so I think, because when he talks about, like, there's been times he actually talks about it, he apparently... And everything, he feels like if anyone actually ever tried to write the book itself, it would never do justice to how he saw in his head and everything. Right. And um, going back to the universe part and everything, we also have to remember he was a single child. He grew up around adults, older mm -hmm. people, people of like two generations back. He pretty much had to entertain himself mm -hmm. and he read like everything his grandfather had in his library and whatnot mm -hmm. so i could see him being naturally just withdrawn because he never really wanted or needed socializing with other people because he had his own imagination his own world to play in mm -hmm. so into adulthood that didn't quite translate too well <laughs> right well there are short stories in here i should have not worried that worded that completely incorrectly there are short stories in here, but when he comes up with these symbolism and even spell work, I mean, there's a lot in this. It depends on how much you've studied, if you do read the Necronomicon or even, like, flip through it. Like, uh, the first thing I'm going to state right now, and I think Elfie's going to agree with me, is do not be afraid to buy the Necronomicon. So I hear so many of my fans are like, oh, my God, I would never buy that. I'm terrified. I wouldn't have that in my house. Oh, my God, please. Okay, once again, it's all about intent. Everything's all about intent. If you take hoodoo and voodoo and do it badly, it's intent. If you do it with a positive energy, it's about intent. If you take the Necronomicon and you summon in demons, well, don't ask me how you get rid of them. Because, you know, Google it. So my point is it's all about intent. And I don't think it's anything to be afraid of. Now, if you've done educational studies like I have, like Elfie says she has tons of books on her shelf. I'm the same. I'm obsessed with books. I would love one day to own my own, like, library in my house because I'm, like, I want to be Belle from Beauty and the Beast. You know what I mean? I love education. I love books. But if you look through this, I don't know if you have, Elfie, but do you get, like, a lot, like, major, like, Egyptian vibes out of this? Well, the, the book was written, like, after Lovecraft and everything, and it's written with that intent when Lovecraft created this, um... Eastern, Neo Eastern character and try to make it Babylonian and everything. And from what some people said, kind of failed at it. Right. And, but then you had other people. I don't, 
Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yep, I can hear it. Was okay. it a ghost? Sorry, I get those a lot. <laughs> Jeez. Or maybe it's your ghost, you know? Now I'm not alone anymore. Like, it's just the ghost. They just want to chime in. I don't want to get their own thoughts in on it. <laughs> Why am I laughing? It's so dark. I'm like, <laughs> Jeez. Because it's, it's one of those, like, okay, like, okay, if you, like, I don't know, like, if you I would have to actually sit down and really look through the originals because it's like. Oh, I would love that. I wish we had a copy of the. Oh my God, wouldn't you love that? I would be I think, nerding out so bad if I could see the original of this. Oh. I, I think they like they show the like how to open stuff and everything, and just to be extra spooky. But it does, I don't think it ever shows like well how do you close it? And it's like well that's kind of a key thing there, of how to do it like. How do we clean this up once we open it? Okay, this is interesting. Zeev just said, oh, Zeev said he loved my dress top thing, or she, he, I'm not sure her. Yes, thank you so much. It's actually just a shirt. It's very Sabrina vibey, right? Like, I'm really into the Sabrina thing. I just, you know, I'm ready for my dark oh. baptism, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's do this. <laughs> let's, <laughs> Elfie's all evil laughing now. She's like into it. Um, Zeev said, I believe that HP Lovecraft was a hybrid like Nikola Tesla. So I'm assuming it's like somebody, like maybe like a, not star seed, but like alien-esque, like is that what you're saying? Like an alien hybrid type of thing? Um, I mean, I think Elon Musk is that, <laughs> personally. <laughs> I mean, he's he's really smart too, and like he took Tesla's, you know, you know, blueprints and then created, or you know, created actual Tesla cars. So was HP Lovecraft? Um, I'm trying to think of some other examples of people that I would see as like geniuses. I don't know if he if H.P. Lovecraft was necessarily a hybrid. I think that's a good theory. I just think that he was like like so in tune on what sucks is he was born at a time where they didn't really keep like birth records. We can't talk to him and interview him. I would be really interested in knowing like when he was born was it sort of like me because i've n i've met a lot of people who were like dead when they were born and they were in it like they could communicate with the other side so i wonder if if he started out in his life on a hard foot that made him able to communicate with both worlds because i really i don't see him as a hybrid i just see him as really like literally 50 percent of the time communicating and connecting with the other side and that could even mean his guy his spirit guides that could mean he was having visions that could mean he could literally step into another realm because i was even telling like elfie cthulhu is like one of my absolute favorite stories that he's ever done and you get so drawn into his world that it's believable is i mean isn't it don't you think it's believable he goes in great detail about, like, the, the archaeology and the mythology and the description. Actually, what was neat was reading the Call of Cthulhu and reading the description of just the idol that they, they work around with this. And, like, I could really picture in my head, now I've seen replicas of the Cthulhu idol and everything, but, like, reading his afterwards, like, wow, they nailed it and everything. And all you have to see, too, like, when they talk about his birth, it's like his father was a salesman, his mother was a, uh, of old money and everything, and his whole life just sounds like it was like one catastrophe after another. Mm -hmm. that Which that's, like that speaks old soul to me right there. Because usually really old souls are star seeds that come to the planet to make a major change has a very, very difficult life path. So when I was reading about him, I, that was the first thing my brain went to, which also would make sense if he was a very old soul. Of course he's going to have a, a shoe in with the other side. They, they're, they even talk about like, the amount of times where he contemplated oblivion, essentially, as he would put it. He would put it very like, romantically in some ways, of like oblivion with mm -hmm. his way of saying it and everything. And he comes like, he, so many times through his life, and then something would change it where it's like, oh, okay, I'll continue on. Mm -hmm. Like, something would have to change so it's like, okay, we'll stay a little longer. Right. Like, wow. Or, oh, I, I, that was hard, but I got on with it, and now I'm moving on to this. 
And I mean, it's interesting, and it, it's proof he was before his time. Because I mean, I'm using, you know, Elfie and I are using the Necronomicon as an example, but there's, I mean, he, there's books and books out there that are Lovecraft. And my point is, is when he was in his, like, actual prime, so when was he born? 1882 or something like that? Does that sound right? Yeah, 1880. Okay, 18... Uh, oh, Lovecraft was born um, August 20th of 1890. Does that make him a Leo or a Libra or a Virgo? That would make him a Leo. Oh, so he was a... Interesting, he was a Leo. I'd like to look up his astrological chart. Ooh! Close to the cusp, but he would be a Leo. Yeah, he would be a Leo, but I wonder what his moon sign is. I have to look that up really quick because when your your moon sign says so much about you because and that's what I refer to in my book as well. I am a Taurus, but I'm looking up I'm looking up his his um his chart really quickly. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Like, he being as poo-poo and all this. If you're like, oh, what's your move sign? He's like, what? What? I know. <laughs> literal, literal articles about, like, how silly he thought all this was. I know, but yet now he's being <laughs> worshipped by the whole genre of, I mean, star seas, astrological love, um, paranormal, occult. Witches literally worship him. I mean, like, you could go on and on about it. What was your opinion on his family life and being an only child? It sounds, it actually sounds pretty interesting. Um, I feel bad for the fact that his, way his mother latched on to him after his dad was institutionalized and then passed away and then just, she focused both all of her fear of losing him but also her disdain. I mean, like, I saw, wrote, read quotes about how she would constantly say he was not a very good-looking child and very openly said this to people and I'm like yeah that really probably didn't help his self-esteem much. Probably not probably well and then his family had a lot of money too but then when his grandfather died the money mm. just sort of disappeared which was basically his start to having a really difficult life. Yeah and I think unfortunately because there was no real structure for him uh, there was like this one podcast I was listening to where they talked about how that try to wear his night owl and they took him about because it was like no 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 bedtime, no rise, he eat whatever he wanted. He was hanging out of school quite often and it was one of those they, they debated whether or not because they talked about his fragile health, mm-hmm. how much of it was actually physical fragile health and that how much of it was his mom's imprinting of like, You're my only thing now connecting me to life and my husband. I can't really hear anything. Okay, I have his chart pulled up. So this is interesting here. So I, I love, I just, I really, I don't know how into astrology you are. I, I can read charts. I, I'm slow at it because I like to really read and like diagnose it. But, um, hang on a second. His, um, I just think as, when it comes to astrology, for for myself, it, it's accurate. I don't know how you feel about it. I I know a little bit of it. I, I would I would honestly not know how to read a chart if you hang one to me. I <laughs> you're like I don't know. I know cat cat yeah. like I've done cats for her and I've done her with her twin flame and stuff and she's like I don't she's like holy crap I don't even know how you're into this because it's so in depth you can literally get so into detail with an astrology chart like you can predict the days that like you're gonna are the best days for you to like invest in something like literally you can get that specific with it um and I think that's why I'm so obsessed with astrology but you you have your your sun your moon and your rising sign and that all represents different things so that's why I like like with him I'm researching it right now so he was a, his moon was a Libra moon, which is interesting because that's what Cat is. Cat's moon is a Libra. Well, what was also fascinating was his childhood, like, because he got into the classics and into, apparently he learned Latin and, and, and into the Greco-Roman. He for a short time believed in the Greco-Roman gods and everything and got a little dedicated to that for like a hot minute. And then... Something changed about that too. Oh, I think it was when he got into science. He's like, nope, 
<laughs> his moon is in his seventh house, which is relationships, marriage, contracts, business partners, equality sharing, or even like interpersonal style. So his moon is is probably more important for H.P. Lovecraft in Libra. He was all about balance, um, which is a big deal because when he's writing, he's in his head, right? Like your moon sign is what you are on the inside. So he was a Libra and it, his moon sign was in the seventh house, which is relationships, marriages, contracts. So essentially you could even think of him creating these books and writing these books. His moon's in the seventh house as like creating contracts and relationships with his fans. And at the time, if you think about it, he wasn't that popular. He was way ahead of his time. He didn't really become popular till I would say like the 80s, something like that. And now he's just out like off the hook. You know, literally it took kind of like Edgar Allan Poe died very, very poor and broke. Similar with Lovecraft, he died. Didn't he die of syphilis? Wait, Wait Poe or Lovecraft? I think Lovecraft died of syphilis. Or am I wrong? No, Lovecraft, Lovecraft died of small intestinal Small cancer. cancer. Okay. <laughs> Did he? Drink? Okay. I couldn't remember. I th- his father th- died. Oh, his father died of syphilis. God, I got it mixed up. I'm sorry. He's probably up there. Like, don't you say I got syphilis? I didn't get syphilis. That's a rough disease because it makes you go crazy. You know. So. Yeah, that was, that was the break he had. I can't remember what there was like a particular phrase they put on his death certificate, and it was like, oh, syphilis that what ended up driving uh, into the asylum. Wow, I'm just looking at his chart. It's interesting because he doesn't have planets where you... Okay, so your um, 11th and 12th house, let's see. 11th house is humanitarianism. A lot of people don't have planets in their 11th and 12th house. If you have planets in your 11th and 12th house in your astrological chart, it usually means you have like a really strong connection to spiritualism, and he does have planets there, so that's interesting. He has a lot of conjunctions, too, which would have made sense as to why he was having, um, like, he has squares, and they're they're called squares in conjunction in in this chart. So if I were to sit down and really read this in depth, it would probably show him having some serious financial issues like he did, like we saw him have. And he actually has his north node is square to his it looks like square to his pluto and pluto is not a good sign pluto is a good sign a sign that shows you of things that you need to like death and rebirth and your your north node is is what your like full life path represents of like while you're here on this planet so for pluto to be right next to (laughs) next to that no wonder he had so many issues so it's just really, I'm just, I'm shocked because it's, it's interesting when you read somebody's chart like that, like they, it always shows through. So now he was born in Rhode Island. So essentially he was born into this like sort of aristocrat family. They had a lot of money. His grandfather had a lot of money. Um, they thought they were going to be, you know, wealthy when, when his child, when this, this child was born. And then all of a sudden his grandfather dies and it essentially sends the whole family into poverty. And then for the remainder of Lovecraft being a writer, he's like struggling financially over and over again. And he ends up dying in poverty, isn't he? Like he's actually in poverty when he dies. And he died at the, I mean, I know it's the 1900s, but he died at the age of 46, which I feel like is still young. Oh, that's all. And the thing, the thing is, too, is like in some ways, this, this, this is, is a, a, I think, I think he's, he's a kind of a perfect example when a, an, an artist, artist needs a manager. Agreed. He, mm-hmm. he, he was, was very bad with managing, I think, his own work. I mean, he, like, he, 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 he didn't like to talk about money, apparently. He didn't like to go after people if they didn't pay him for his writing. He didn't like... He was sometimes picked and choose when he wanted to be extra about writing or anything, or even editing, apparently, too. Mm-hmm. Like, someone said, oh, please just edit this. He just, he just said, like, no, not going to bother, and just, like, pass by a paying job because he just didn't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So I think this is one of the perfect examples of, like, this is when the artist needs a manager to do the paper pushing hard that the artist is well and you also think if he was actually up throughout the nights overnight creating these 
worlds of Cthulhu, like like you said, if you haven't read Cthulhu or any of his other, you guys have to go get the books. Like they're always on sale for fairly inexpensive at Barnes and Noble. I love going. Don't ever take me to Barnes and Noble, Elfie. I'll go in there and I won't be out for five hours. Like literally, it's so dangerous because I love bookstores. But read it and and understand that the depth that he took for the detail is just amazing. Like you are in the world, like you are submerged. I can't help it. Like I, if anyone's in the new Facebook group for Ghost Girl Diaries, I posted this meme where it was like when a tourist talks about something they're passionate about. I'm literally doing it. It's this like this picture of Rihanna, a meme, and she's like ah talking. I feel like that's me. I love. H.P. Lovecraft and Poe because you can literally like jump into their world through one of their books and if they are reading and writing that much in detail and and like if H.P. Lovecraft was up from one to three in the morning doing these writings how in the world would you expect him to get up the following day and go to work or like do do normal people things or like you say manage himself he wouldn't have been, think of that, you would have been sleeping in until 11 or noon because you're staying up all night writing. And then it's that thing, you get that creative flow going, you don't want to stop. Um, what do you think about it? It's one of those, like, apparently, like, later in his life, like, towards the end, like, he, he mentions the, the part where he feels like, his childhood, if things had been better managed or better, if he had been better educated in a trade or something, things would not be so difficult for him. Because honestly, he, like you said, he was born in kind of an aristocratic family. That was all he knew. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he, he was an editor. He did in some um, journalism, he did writing stuff, but like he was never really, up for a nine to five job like when someone when he decided he wanted to like go in to the army when world war one and everything mm -hmm. one of the friends were like you probably shouldn't because they're like he wouldn't survive it mm -hmm. <laughs> because this, this like five foot eleven 150 pound nervous person mm -hmm. it's like yeah don't do that it, no, that is true. I mean, if you come from an aristocrat family, money's passed down, assuming wealth will be passed down. I mean, ultimately, like it it has been passed down, essentially. You know, like, it was passed down at one point. You wouldn't... That was all he was living on. Yeah, you wouldn't know. Yeah, you wouldn't know what do you do with yourself if you don't have that accessibility. Essentially, you haven't been taught life skills. Right? Yeah, I mean... He didn't even finish high school or anything, no. so... And he apparently sounded like almost like he barely was in high school because he constantly was being taken out of school or he was leaving school and coming back and this and that. He never really finished it. So he was never really taught... He was not taught a lot of adult skills, essentially. None. Really none. Like, I feel bad for the guy because it's like... They just sort of expected him to follow in the footsteps of his family it also it appeared to me and i read some blogs too that people had like done research on him it seemed like his family was sort of ashamed of him for being a writer too i think that's like a stigma that still follows some writers around like oh you're never gonna make money being a writer you're never gonna make money doing that like you need you should just be like a, in his case probably like involved in the stock market or like a businessman or something you know like or own your own business and instead he's sitting there writing creepy novels and they're probably like oh these kids creepy like there was one blog i wrote or i wrote i was um, reading about and it was like yeah he makes like you know these creepy characters that are like scaring kids and making moaning sounds and so i mean that's that's enough to say what his family thought about him even though we're sitting here saying he's a genius, his family was like, oh, you're not good enough, you're shit, essentially. I think the, the problem is, is, like, okay, so they weren't exactly happy when his mother married his, his dad because he was a blue-collar salesman mm -hmm. and everything. So they weren't happy with that right off the bat for Lovecraft and even before. Mm -hmm. And so then with Lovecraft himself, to, unfortunately, even though they were on a very doodly inheritance, to them, writing 
for Pulse magazine was not exactly considered a career. Mm-hmm. It was not considered something you brag about, like, guess what my son does. They, they were like, unfortunately, this is what my son does. And he they was barely he, he, he was barely keeping food on the table for himself with that. And it's like yeah, you saying like like he, he'd do one article for this magazine company he was working for and he wouldn't do another one until it was absolute that he had to do it because maybe rent was due or whatever else. So he also didn't have a lot of motivation. I mean, maybe he had written so much and it just wasn't going anywhere that he was slowly like, oh, I guess I'm going to do it again. Like, I'm going to try it again. You know, like he and it, it was like constant battles in his life, personal life. And then he's well, also that, being kicked with the family. Well, apparently, of course, it's like if you look at the way, was, way his life and everything growing up and everything, kind of, apparently he was very self-conscious about any critique at all of his work. Like, he supposedly, like, act fine, but fine, see, he was very self-conscious of his work being critiqued in any manner at all. And, unfortunately, it seems like, instead of, I don't know if he looked at writing as a literal job or career or just a creative outlet, because that might have been why maybe he picked and choose, like, what he wanted to write and they finally had to pull teeth to get articles out of them sometimes. Mm-hmm. You can tell it was very slow moving though. Like if you just research his life, Elfie and I reached, you know, researched his life, and you can tell it was like. I I think he was happy writing like the Necronomicon or writing his short stories, but I don't think I think that was where his passion was, and at the time. He's creating these in the 1800s and or early 1900s. People don't really give a shit about it, honestly. And that's why he's having to work as a publisher in a magazine and publish, you know, other editorials. And he was doing it to feed himself, but I don't that was definitely not where his passion laid. But it's what we all do, right? Is we all have to get a job to work that 9 to 5 and whatever, you know, like got to bring food in for the family and to feed yourself. So it's interesting, but once again, I still feel like we're talking about someone who was just way too ahead of his time. Because now we have things like Fiverr, we have things like Upwork, where if he wanted to be like a freelance writer, there's outlets for it, you know? Back then, what were your options as a freelance writer? The newspaper, a journal, maybe maybe a magazine here or there and that's about it like what other options did you have because any other like atypical writing such as documents would have been done through a legal team through someone that had gone to law school right and he is go ahead oh i was just gonna say like he's writing for pulp magazines that were not Mm -hmm. really meant to last i mean these Mm -hmm. were considered great works of classical well, it was it was his friends who basically kept his work alive. I mm-hmm. mean, if he didn't have that circle of people who loved his work, it would have probably gone just to to nothing. It would have just gone into the recycling bin because no one really thought of those pulp papers as anything but just something you consume, like a comic book back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the I think the couple times he did actually publish a actual book book. Mm-hmm. They didn't sell too well, Mm-mm. and that even brought him down more. It's like, well, I guess they don't like my stuff. No, he didn't become something till like you know within the last fifty years, in my opinion. Like, no one really cared who he was. But really, I mean, even before the eighties, though, if you think about a cult, quote unquote, I because I've talked to my mom about like the theory of of you know being a part of the cult, and that that can be paranormal investigating even before there was equipment, you know, that can be breaking into haunted locations, asylums, um, uh, or what's another example? Witchcraft, right? And my mom said that she remembers back when it really got popular was like the hippie era, Vietnam era, the 60s, right? Free love, peace, and joy. Um, the movement of the of the witch witchy era was um, females breaking off and doing uh, love potions 
or, or love spells and creating this stuff. And then they start researching the occult side of things and somebody pops in with Lovecraft. Well, it takes really good 20 years till into the 80s to gain some serious momentum. And that's when they started actually really reproducing and republishing his books finally. Even though it's been like forever, like many years, you know, 100 years later. And it's sad because it's like he died in poverty. He didn't have anything <laughs> like this poor guy. And then now on. But that must have been his life path was to come to this planet, make make these short stories and books and make himself well known and then to leave because he's literally world renowned now you know like it's crazy how pop culture and even movies so you've done you did a little of this research too he has been involved with pop culture like you probably don't even realize how much he's been involved with pop culture what was something you found about that that was kind of shocking we were chatting about that earlier what I found interesting was that I didn't realize until, like, starting to look at the list of all the various things that are considered um, low crafting. I mean, the, the dude created a genre without realizing he created a genre, essentially. Um, <laughs> that's such a mood lovecraft thank you for creating the occult okay boo like we appreciate you so much like without you we wouldn't be here so cheers to lovecraft anyway keep going um uh, but i i did realize that um i essentially grew up with a lot of this pop culture lovecraftian and stuff without even really knowing who lovecraft was until much later when like so i'm like oh hp lovecraft Cthulhu, and like who <laughs> Right. And then read up about him was like, okay, so this is, and it's just like, you have the Evil Dead, you have the, the games, you have uh, Hellraiser, um, you have Hellboy, it, it's just all these various pop culture things that just took from a few stories and like expanded upon it. Thank you for cheering, Nikita. Yes, Hellboy was a, a huge one. Um, Cthulhu. And it oh, may- <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I know. And it makes you wonder too. You t- okay? So you talk about sailors claiming there's like giant octopus under the sea or whatever. I'm not saying there isn't or squid or whatever. Okay, I'm not saying that doesn't exist, but it does make you wonder if at some point in the 1900s they got wind of Lovecraft's writings. And, like, they had a fear of it, and then you could almost manifest it. Or they think they saw something. Or, oh, this giant squid. You know, and then you have these men at sea talking about, like, the actual Cthulhu, like, that lived. It makes you wonder, did H.P. Lovecraft inspire sailors talking about Cthulhu? Or did the sailors inspire H.P. Lovecraft talking about, like, Cthulhu lives? So I just, you don't know. And now it's so predominant. It's just like, of course you're going to reference. I was just telling Elfie, my my bathroom is Cthulhu themed. Like, that's how much of a hardcore, like, Lovecraft fan I am, you know? And it, it's just crazy. Like, he, he even got in, involved in politics for a while. Um, the his, giant squid part was, like, way before... Lovecraft and everything, and that probably comes back to like him enjoying like the Odyssey and yes. the mythos to rhyme, like Poseidon and the oceans and everything, and then you get the signs of the idea that could there be a giant squid and whatnot, and they later find out there is a giant squid. No, yeah, actually, they do exist, by the way. Yeah, uh, they also said that um, Lovecraft was influenced by um, Poe, so I thought that was awesome too. I'm sorry. I'm reading through Wait, my. What? I'm reading through my notes that Edgar Al or that um, ah. other influences mm-hmm. were with Poe. Um, yeah. Forbidden knowledge. I'm looking. I'm looking for the section where I was talking about. Um, gosh, there's I, there's isn't that the notes just go on and on, like there's so much well, in there. Well, what was cool too is the fact that like. Not only Lovecraft writes all stuff, but the fact that he grows wrote for other people that he edited for other people, and the fact that there was like a possible moment where him and Houdini working together, and then it wasn't, it was unfortunately due to Houdini's death that stopped that, but then they later on found the manuscript 
that him, Houdini, and one other guy were actually working on to create. Oh, okay. There, there's the one I want to talk. Gilmore, Gil, Gilmore del, del Toro. I can't even spell his name. Say his name right. Yeah. Which is uh, Pan's Labyrinth. You've seen all of those, which are dark. And I, I don't know if you guys haven't seen any of Gilmore's videos or movies. Oh my God, he's. I mean, he's up there with Tim Burton, in my opinion, with just like the dark, edgy stuff. But apparently. Oh, the Devil's Backbone. Yes, yes. I mean. It, it's a shame that, that H.P. Lovecraft isn't still alive because I think that if he would have been converted into a director, can you imagine if he was directing movies? Oh, my... I'd love to, like, do a movie and, like, channel H.P. Lovecraft as a director. I would honestly be freaked out by the fan base. I think he would just <laughs> totally be, like... In some ways, turn off, I think. If he saw the fan base. Okay, here's the list of pop culture, which you went through it too, right? And it was, like, ridiculous how much... Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, H.P. Lovecraft inspired Metallica to write a song called The Call of Cthulhu. Uh I mean, hello. Like, geez, how how much bigger can you get with Metallica? You know what I mean? Um, Oh, my gosh, this list, you guys, is just... There's games involved. Oh, there's so many... Tabletop games, video games, PC games, there's, there's books. I mean, heck, I even found another book when I was doing research called I Am Providence that I didn't know about. That's like, <laughs> Another thing, World of War, I'm a big, I, I play video games a lot when I have like, you know, five minutes to myself, which hasn't been very often lately. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> World of Warcraft. What do you know what you're doing afterwards? Oh, God, I gotta get this. When this book is done. I need some Jesus in my life, you know? Like, I just need, <laughs> I need some help. I told Kat, I was like, she's been helping me do social media management. And she's like, well, tell me what I can do to help you. Just, like, give me the list. I was like, Kat, I, I don't even know if I can think of the list right now. Like, I don't even know what's going on here. Um... But World of Warcraft, so that's a video online video game, which I'm a big World of Warcraft player. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I've played it for years. My main is a Blood Elf Paladin. Um, but they're talking about that it, it also has sections that are Cthulhu or, you know, based on HP Lovecraft, which World of Warcraft is huge. Like, wow, it's huge. So that was shocking. There's even, like, different influences that have happened with um, religion and um, occultism. So they're saying... Even Anton LaVey, who was the founder of the Church of Satan, was also inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. Like, like that's... Ob- I mean... I would not... I'm not surprised, honestly. I mean, you have this... Uh, Anton LaVey being an entertainer in himself. I mean, the guy worked in uh, sideshows and played the Calliope, and I could see him grabbing a copy of H.P. Lovecraft and just, like, totally get, get a kick out of that. Just, okay, this is totally this is off topic, but I just really want to talk about it with you for a second because I'm just interested in hearing what you say, and you'll definitely be interested in hearing my opinion on it. Have you met people that are self-proclaimed Satanists before, like Anton LaVey? Mm-hmm. Did you say yeah? yeah? One of my friends is actually part of the, the church and everything. Okay. I mean, obviously, I've met them. Like, Zach has a few <laughs> that works down with him. There's two different kinds, in my opinion, and I'm assuming if you're friends with one, they're probably the calmer version, right? Is that what it is? Well, he's a part of the church and everything. I think he's, like, in the higher ranks. Um, I can't remember. I'll probably botch it anyways. Um, <laughs> it's a mood. But, like, he's, he's the example where it's, like, he's one of the chillest Satanists you'll ever meet. And See? he's actually one of the ones. Like, he, he's been on our show and everything. His name's Corvus. He's usually one that goes in to kind of dispel the the inaccurate information. Why? Like, I know. This church of Satan, this is not Church of Satan. Why are Satanists either really nice or, like, psychotic? Like, uh, there's no middle ground. Like, I don't understand. Like, literally. There's a... I met a self-proclaimed Satanist. I feel like Anton LaVey was the same way, which was, like you said, a character. He had a performance to play. I am Anton LaVey, the... The, you know, master behind the Church of Satan, the founder, blah, blah, blah. I, I know another guy that's a Satanist. He's not, he's known by association. Does that make sense? And yeah. he always, like, I, I think because I'm a girl and I'm blonde, he, like, wants to scare me. 
by using the term like church of satan and i'm like like so i'll i'll be around him like if it's a group gather obviously not since you know rona but um there's a group gathering and he comes up to me he's like do you know i'm part of the church of satan and he gets this like dark intent on his eyes and he's like staring and i'm looking at him like you do not scare me like at all <laughs> like i don't know why some satanists like when you re when you I, I think they're blowhards a little bit some satanists like there's cool satanists which i assume they don't really do the dark stuff either and then the blowhards and i see anton levey doing the blowhard stuff and it's funny because you're sitting here looking at him like anton levey you have to put the dots together the the founder of, of the church of satan who was inspired by H.P. Lovecraft? You're not so tough anymore, boo boo. Okay, like. What? Why can't you say? I think I think in a way similar to to other performers. Stuff. I think honestly, because he took from a lot of things. That he took from probably H.P. Lovecraft. Probably took from other ceremonial magic. Oh, have you? Oh, Egyptian lore. Oh my, Enochian. Have you ever read Enochian stuff? If you read Enochian and compare it to the Church of Satan, it's almost damn identical. Like, he stole Enochian lore, in my opinion. And now I'm going to have Satanists come after me for saying that. It's interesting. Like, if you ever sat down and, like, read the, the Satan Bible, it's pretty logical. It's not anything crazy or outrageous. It's just more like, I'm doing my thing. You do your mm-hmm. thing. Don't mess with me. We're all cool. Let's just be chill and everything. And I think with LeVay, like, when you see him on the shows and everything, or in interviews, yes, he's going to do the, the, the eyebrows. And the <laughs> he probably and marked those suckers, man. Like, that was some good eyebrow pencils. He was a performer. He knew mm-hmm. that if he didn't make a big presentation, no one was going to listen to him. No one was going to care. They're like, church of what? Mm-hmm. So I think if you sat down with him with app or anything, just, like, chilling with the... Having been very good with him, he was probably pretty chillax guy, and honestly, it would have been pretty cool to talk to him to see what his actual thoughts were because mm-hmm. there's making sound bites for the interviews, and then there'd be, what do you really think about the law? Mm-hmm. And then just him not being honest. <laughs> it's true, and and the thing you know what bothers me the most about satanic worship, which by the way, there's different kinds of satanic worship, just like there's different kinds of christianity and different kinds of catholicism there's just different different wavelengths of it elfie is right there's most the the most uh factual part behind the church of satan um is i am independent i do my own thing you don't mess with me i won't mess with you there's laws of balance that sort of type of thing if you come after me expect me to come back after you um but, you know, you do look at sacrifices, and I am not excusing it by any means because I, I'm repulsed by sacrifices because I love animals and children more than anything on this earth. Um, but do, sacrifices do go back thousands of years. And so I do think that they gain some of their, their culture from what we used to do in earlier days, earlier stages of, you know, us being humans on this planet. Um, but you know, I just don't like oh, it. That's a whole other can of worms. It is. It is. Like, it is. He he did he did not cut down sacrifices, and the 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 ridiculous ones who do the, there's a whole their their own thing that they do and everything. There are cultures that do sacrifices, but they're not looked at the way like we overblow it. Like they don't do human. Sacrifices. But that's Hollywood that has stepped in. You know what I mean? That has yeah, overblown Hollywood. it. And that's where you, and I'm not saying I'm a Satanist by any means. Like, I, and I'm not saying I support Satanists. I just don't care what people do. Do your own thing. Just don't hurt. Don't cut. Don't slit a goat's throat. Okay. Let the goat live. Give the goat to a farmer and like have a reenactment. Okay. Do you have, what did that goat do to deserve that? Let it go. But like it is, it's true. It's interesting. And that is a whole different can of worms. But I wish people wouldn't be afraid of the term Satan or Satanist. Because it's been Hollywood that's gotten in our head with that and on the majority side. And that's what I say about, like, demons and darkness, too. I'm not saying that you should just go become a Satanist, for God's sake. I think everybody needs to read into stuff that they believe in. But, um, yes, I do. It is interesting. Anton LaVey has some uh, of his beliefs based off of Lovecraft. 
that's how influential this writer was. That's how influ influential Lovecraft is for a person to literally start a religion. Which, by the way, they are a major religion. They sued. Did you hear they sued um, uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix? The Church of Satan. Uh, I they. Was it, was it, oh, was it the other one? Though they, they won because they used the Baphomet statue without their permission. And the Baphomet yeah, statue was like the, what they see is their, it's like they're worshiping God, right? Well, that, that was a different thing because you have, you have the church saying it, and I believe you have the temple thing, which is a totally different thing, not associated with the church of Satan. And they had commissioned a Baphomet statue a few years ago to go in front of, I can't remember which. It was one of the city halls. Basically, it was. <laughs> I know. Why did that make me laugh? It made me laugh so hard. They had Baphomet in front of a city hall, guys. <laughs> All these politicians. But it was <coughs> because to them, they they essentially are like they don't believe in the deity. They mm -hmm. believe in the idea of mm -hmm. personification of right. Devil, but they don't believe in believe in a literal one. Right. So their their protest is the idea of separation of church. State. So when they saw that the town hall had the Ten Commandments in front, they felt that they they're like, well, if you're going to put the Ten Commandments, we should be allowed to also put our Agreed. religious mm -hmm. image, which they made a Baphomet, and it I think it didn't end up becoming in front of the hall because of stuff but they still had it in it like you said they, they had it somewhere but i don't think it was in front of the hall but i do think it was near it was outside because i remember people taking pictures of it and seeing it online um yeah because they have this like that they were trying to like get they put their thing now like in their own like place in massachusetts or something. it was in mass i think I yeah mm -hmm. well yeah they were essentially and, saying yeah, I got a whole lawsuit there. <laughs> yeah i know wasn't that crazy but it is it's proof of that religion doesn't have to be based on Christianity or anything else. It can just be based on uh, Lovecraft. Why don't we make the Church of Lovecraft, Elfie? Do you want to do that with me? <laughs> we could worship Cthulhu. Yes. Cat could knit everybody Cthulhu's. I'm telling you, we got it down. I'm telling you. I was like, it's, at least in the story, it seems like anyone who was part of a cult of Cthulhu, it never ends well. <laughs> It's true. And once again, you can manifest Cthulhu. I'm just saying, if you believe it, you can manifest it. I want to make sure I didn't skip anything else in this pop culture because, I mean, the list went on and on, and it was just amazing to me. I think I got all of the big ones. Um, they just talk about how Lovecraft, Lovecraft was huge and, like, all supernatural and horror. He's, he's, you know, been a part of all of that lore that people have brought to life. Um, so many directors have been inspired by him and his writings, and, um, I mean, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, they, oh Necronomicon, they, the Book of the Dead is what it's called. That's, that's the, AKA, the Book of the Dead, which I just still feel that that's a little bit dramatic, don't you? Because I'm like you, I've seen some dark books, you know, like I've met some dark people and they're like, this is the book of the dead. And I'm like, really? Like, I've seen actual translated texts of the book of the dead, like the Egyptian book of the dead, the Greek book of the dead. They're never that, that freaky. They're pretty, like, tame. Well, that's like if people knew that the Church of Satan, I'm going to seriously have a bunch of Satanists come after me. I just know it. I just know it. <laughs> if, and I'm just keep talking, if people knew, if you literally took the Bible of the Church of Satan, because I have, because I've had friends that have been a part of the Church of Satan, and I'm talking about the Church of Satan where they believe in, like, you know, like Elfie said, free to do whatever I want, you can't control me, keep your distance, let's be cool, I'm cool, you're cool. If you read through that book and you compare it to an Enochian literature book, which is essentially, it's an Egyptian, um, would you call Enochian uh, a religious base? I guess you would. I guess it would be considered a religion. If you compare... Uh, I, I would call it magical practice. Well, the magical, okay, okay, okay that, yeah. Magical Doctor, practice. With John D. and Edward, Ed, Ed, Edward, Edward Kelly. Uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, Sears and everything, who crazy, the Enochian mm -hmm. uh, angel language and everything went from there. If you read Enochian magical practices and you compare it to the Church of Satan... 
It's like reading. It's not scary is what I'm trying to say. And like they I think that that's part of the independence that they're trying to gain, though, behind the name of the quote Church of Satan is to scare people off because they want to be independent and they want to be different than than what we're used to seeing in society with normal religion like catholicism and angels and like worshiping statues and uh maybe we should i want to make like a greek goddess church why am i having ideas for churches <laughs> like literally i know i'm gonna start a religion we're gonna call it the goat girl religion no that sounds too saint we can't call it goat we'll call it ghost girl no so um but yeah Lovecraft is amazing. If you don't own this, guys, and you're a paranormal lover, it's literally like 10 bucks, I think, on Amazon or something or less. Just order it. Like, this is, if you're in paranormal, like, you need to look through this, read through it. I mean, I, you can't really read this like a book because it doesn't, like, it's kind of like short stories with symbolism. Like Elfie said, I'd love to see, like, what the original actually looked like because there's, like, invocations and, like, supposed spells in here. But it's just a really cool book to, to say that you have, you know? Like, it's old, and it's just cool. I think, I think also, also it, it would actually, actually like, like, the, the, the Kate Kate file, file and the Japan Japan is that, that, like, the... Yes. The the book. Book. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, then the, the next one, I think it's a good book to read and add to your perspective, a paranormal perspective, mostly because if you're doing a case of, like, right okay so now with that being said the last thing that i'd love and i mean there's a lot of beautiful like symbolism in here so i just think it's cool to look at now, the last thing I want to ask you, Elfie, because you, you had talked to me about kind of some research behind seeing people that do use the Necronomicon for spell work and for, like, summoning invocations. Is it possible to use the Necronomicon in that way so you choose to? Well, I mean, there's apparently various versions of Necronomicon. And, and like I said earlier, that they were written by occultists. So I don't think it would be impossible, impossible especially if we go back to like last time, thinking of uh, working your will, and if you almost like thought more than, and you live in it, it's just working energy. It may seem like it's something fabricated, but if you believe it hard enough, you could probably call something up, maybe not. Literally, but still being energetic to this effect. Mm -hmm. I do think it's possible too. I do think it would be possible. But I also think that if that's what you wanted to be a part of, you'd have to be pretty. You'd have to have a step up on your spell work, don't you think? Like, you can't just be like a baby witch and be like, I'm going to summon Baphomet from this book. Like, you need to really know what you're doing, because you, it's, it's, you can't just, like, stand there and recite something out of this book and be like, let's see if a demon shows up. That's not how this works. I, I guess what I'm I trying to do, I want to take, <laughs> well, and I want to take the fear out of it, too, is the point of me talking about this, because I think people are, I've literally had people be like, I'm so afraid of that book. If it was in my house, like, I'd burn it, and I'm like... Yeah, I, I think, think it's the problem, problem is, it's similar, similar to, like, like we said before with the weed board, board and everything. It's, it's, unfortunately, Hollywood has, even though it's very entertaining, it has kind of set up a spin on these items that people look at them as very, very real things with more, more times than not, they are just tools. Items, right, or, or tools. They're just pieces of the board, mm -hmm. and they're not going to literally jump out and eat your face. Mm hmm. Oh man, the the fights I've been in with people about Ouija boards is just like, I you can, I mean they're just like oh my god, it's they're so dangerous. I would never have one, which I'm, I don't. You shouldn't have one unless you're gonna plan on using it anyways. But like I've met Robert Merch. Do you know who he is? Have you met him before? I am. 
Yep, and I envy his collection. <laughs> I, is he not, like, what you, like, what, I didn't, I didn't know him before, obviously. I mean, like, I had watched him on TV. But, like, when you meet him in person, he's not the same energy you would think somebody that owns, like, 400 Ouija boards would have. You know, like, he is so oh, cool. He's so, he's <laughs> so down to earth. And he's like, yeah, I own 400 whatever Ouija boards and I have no <laughs> paranormal activity in my house. And, and, like, it's just proof. It is not about the item or the tool, like Elfie's saying, or about the, the Necronomicon. It's about how you use it. It's about how you practice it. And, you know, it's, it's crazy. People will own a Melmeter or an ovulus and they won't own a Ouija board and I'm like it's the same thing the it's the same thing it's the same thing like <laughs> or they'll go you like oh I'm gonna go on an investigation I'm gonna use my digital camera or my digital recorder and my night vision camera but I'm not gonna ever use a Ouija board and I'm like it's the same thing <laughs> it's literally the same thing so it's just I think it's that separation I think it's because it's an electronic modern device they think it's some reason it's in that safe realm of they're not doing anything uh, occultish because it's something electronic because we've been taught to think anything electronic won't work with occult stuff. So if as long as you don't play with the weed for but you play with the like digital recorder, you're good. They're not going to do anything. And, and the irony is, is even if we did like play devil's advocate and go on the dark side of that Elfie is demons can still come through the digital recorder, can't they? It is. Oh yeah, exactly. Like you, it doesn't. I mean, it's. I honestly think that it's easier for a demon to come through a digital recorder or a video camera than it is for the Ouija board. You know what I mean? Like literally, because the Ouija board, you're they're like. Most of the time. Go ahead. I think most of the time it's just a dead person going messing around. It is. Been around long enough dealing with Ouija boards where someone's like, heck, I even talk about like. Yeah, when I'm a ghost, I'm going to totally dismiss with so I've said that, too. I say that all the time. <laughs> well, I've been with Cat on set or haunted locations, and we've used Ouija boards, and it'll start to spell out Zozo, and I call it out. I'm like, you are not. You are not. You aren't. I know you're not. Like, I know the difference between. Like, you do, too. Like, when you've been around that, like, dark stuff, it is like a mucky, heavy energy that you are. You know what it is. And if it's just Joe Schmo from Kokomo sitting there on the other side playing Ouija board with you, you know it's not a demon, okay? You're sitting there like, no, you are not. Like, you must think you're cool. But then you do get other people involved that are like, oh, my God, I got a demon come through. And you're just like, really, though? Then did like you? Are you George sure it was a demon? Or was it George? <laughs> All right, George. Like, yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Elfie, so much for being here today. Lovecraft is amazing. Um, I, I just think that it is so fun to have these chats because people need to know ab about these people and understand the influence that it has made on us as paranormal investigators. We only scratched the surface, too. Like, honestly, we, we barely surface on both his life and his work so it's like this could be a multi-parter oh it could be it could be because it, there's so much that goes into him like we barely skimmed his life guys so i guess what i could tell you guys is we can always have another follow-up later if you're interested in it but always do your own research too because these are literally like the creators like elvie said this guy sitting here writing the necronomicon didn't even realize he created the paranormal genre I mean, if you think back to when he's born in the late 1800s, par that was when, well, I mean, early 1800s were when witches were being, you know, hung and burned at the stake and everything else. I mean, there were none burned in the United States, but nonetheless, in Europe, they were. And you couldn't have contact with the paranormal or be a part of the occult or label yourself as a witch or label yourself as an occultist and he literally created that genre and without him we wouldn't be sitting here watching our favorite shows like paranormal state or ghost adventures we wouldn't be able to do that we wouldn't be able to have paranormal youtube channels or paranormal podcasts because at that time and that was also brave of him to step out to write these things think about that they could have labeled him just as easy 
you know, like for being involved in the occult or being a witch. Now, at that time, they weren't like killing people still, but he still could have been shunned out, which he may have been. We don't really know details because he didn't really write memoirs. But it's these people that make us capable of what we can do. Okay, I do want to read all his letters. He mm-hmm. finally has started publishing his letters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably not all 100,000 of them. In a book? Yeah. Do you, th- you think it's in a book? <laughs> yeah, they've compiled, like, I think there's a couple of books that are compiled of his letters. And oh, you're kidding. Ki- <gasps> give even more information about his life. Is it on Amazon? Probably. Oh. I only just started recently coming across it because everyone kept saying, like, oh, his letters, his letters. It's like, I want to read his letters. That's because true. Who knows? Oh. His yeah. views of his otherness, his views on other people, his, his controversial views, and just all of that as it takes you through his life. Oh, my gosh. They do have it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And it is. Oh, there's more stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, but and, right. So once again, we're saying we could literally do this for like. What, but isn't that all? Isn't that why we live paranormal? All of these topics, we could literally talk for hours, right? I mean, literally, we could go down such a rabbit hole with any of these topics, which is why I love it. But yeah, he has. Um, oh, it yeah. says his main letters, volume two. It's so I'm assuming it's a large composite. Um, it's sixty dollars yeah. for the paperback. Like holy crap. His oh, volume yeah. one is 29. But once again, okay, I'd love to read them, but are, I doubt they're all paranormal. You know what I mean? So you'd have to weed through, but that would be a good one. Oh my, I might have to order these. I'm just saying. Now, most of them I can talk about for with his uh, friends who are also writers, his, his mm-hmm. family members, and everyone, everyone. Apparently, he preferred writing to someone. Like, he'd be the person who'd rather text you than actually talk to you on the phone. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, because he was w- creepy withdrawn, which mood, I feel you. That's how I've been writing my book. I get it. If Oh, my God. I've been writing my book. I can't imagine being an, a, just a writer. Oh, my God. I would, I would lose my mind, <laughs> like, literally, because I've been finishing my book, and he did this all the time. Like, you yeah. literally have to have inner dialogue with yourself constantly. You, you'd be exhausted. Apparently, he just like being with himself. <laughs> Alfie. <laughs> oh my gosh, Alfie! Thank you so much for being here. Now I have my monthly agenda coming up. If you guys want to know what we're doing for the month of December, as a heads up, on Friday, February sixth, Cat will be doing a stream with me on Richard Ramirez and Lupercalia. Lupercalia is my second favorite holiday. Of course, we all know what my first favorite holiday is. Elfie will be back again on February 12th on Friday, and we're going to chat about skinwalkers and more Native American lore. I need to send you the TikTok. There's a guy on TikTok, Elfie, who lives on a ranch, I think in Arizona. I follow him, and he's always outside catching what he thinks is skinwalkers on his ranch. And he's always catching audio of them, like, making noises and, like, talking to him in the dark really cool so that would be cool to incorporate in the stream i want to go i actually i'd like to contact him and go to his ranch to investigate the skinwalkers i would be interested in knowing what would happen if you went to skinwalker ranch with a native american with like me what would happen would they be afraid of me or would it make them come closer you know my grandma's rolling over in her grave like please don't do that crystal (laughs) like please don't do that okay don't Suddenly the activity just skyrockets. It's like, oh, shoot, what now? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, let's see, we're doing, um, Kat is, now, are you doing Black Eyed Kids with me? Yeah, I'm doing Black Eyed Kids with you. Okay, so Black Eyed Kids, we're going to be doing that next Friday will be the 19th of February. And then on the 26th of February, Kat is going to come in with btk and serial killers so that should be really interesting too so i'm excited cat and i are, are we have some tea to spell about you spill about richard ramirez if you have not watched the special on netflix about him i can't remember what it's called i think it's to catch a killer it's really good it's only a four, four video series if you guys get a chance those of you listening um it's really good i did not know richard ramirez was also a pedophile and a child molester? I didn't realize that. 
So that was new information to me. I thought he just was killing people, which was bad enough. But yeah, so they really released some deets on him. So catch that series on Netflix so you guys are caught up for when Kat and I talk about it next week. I'm also watching another documentary um, on Netflix. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called something like What Happens When You Die or like Afterlife. I can't remember. It's a short. Have you seen it? Have you seen it on there? I think I recommend it. I have not watched it. Oh, yeah, okay. it looks like um, afterlife stuff. I watched the first. About it? I watched the first episode last night, and it was like nothing short of amazing. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. They okay. they interview people talking about like their near death experiences. Now the next chapter is about psychics and mediums, so that will be interesting. I haven't seen this the second um uh, episode, but I'm gonna hopefully incorporate that in a future series too. Because I talk about having near-death experiences in my book. I ha- I've had several in my life. And mine compared to some of these people um, in this series. And I was shocked by it. So that's interesting. So anyway, Elfie, thank you so, so much for being here. We appreciate you so much. So I will see you back on February 12th for Skinwalkers. I'm done. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Elfie. Make sure you guys follow her at, um, at Elfie Music on, um, on something, on Instagram. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a closing statement. Just say thank you guys so much for being patient with me while I'm going through this process of finalizing uh, my book. It's been a lot of work. It really has been. And uh, it's going to be very rewarding once it's done. But I just can't wait for it to be done. Uh, Like I said, the latest it should be available is Monday. Make sure you're following me on Twitter for notifications. I am so tired. But I'll tell you what, once I get that copy in my hand, I'm probably going to cry. I've had some of you ask me questions like, you know, when is your next book going to come out? Because I told you guys I was going to release the actual paranormal book next uh, I need a minute <laughs> is my answer. I'm going to need a minute to like catch my brain up. So let, let's do this one first. I don't know how people pump out like t- a book every two months. I don't know how they, d- I would die. I literally wouldn't make it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have the next one. It'll be soon. But remember this, this book does have paranormal stuff in it. It just talks about, um, it's based off of my personal soulmates, karmic partners, and there is a chapter about my twin flame in there, which I know some of you were dying for that tea. I know you guys can't wait to, to, to read that tea, okay? So it's in there. No names will be shared, but there's some tea, okay? Because I know I've been so private with my life. A lot of people are like, they want to know about my life, and I understand. And, you know, I guess the, the biggest thing I can say is, just because I'm a pug public figure doesn't make my life any easier. You know, like some people think like, oh, you've been on YouTube and you've been on television and you have all this success and like your life is perfect. Ha, <laughs> like far from, far from. I've definitely had my share of like some serious, serious struggles um, even before, um, way, way before um, I was on television in 2011. So I can't wait for you guys to read my book. It is a little raw, though, knowing like that my story is about to be like way exposed. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you all so much. Watch my um, Twitter for further notifications. Kat will be next um, next week with me with Richard Ramirez and Lupercalia. Um, oh, Ghost Girl merch. If you guys haven't seen, I got my Ghost Girl Diaries store up. So it's Ghost Girl. Let me write it down ghostgirlglam.com and I have um, new merch up there and I have a lot of Ghost Girl Diaries tees up there. I also put on I think three um, Valentine's tees on my um, Ghost Girl Glam um, site and one of them is a Lupercalia tee, I'm just saying Um, and it has a Roman picture in the background because Lupercalia was based off of Rome and uh there's a hoodie there's a ghost girl hoodie that's up i've had a lot of you guys catch merch and you've like loved it so make sure you go to ghostgirlglam.com there will be more i'm hoping once the book's done i'll be able to drop um merch even earlier than that like themed for like different holidays and pagan holidays and paranormal related merch if you guys have any requests please leave them in the comments below i love to hear from you guys 
Um, make sure to follow us on social media. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys.